brought back something I think is going to make my life much easier. An automated cattle feeder. This is from Hainan. It's actually a local company. Uh, they're about 45 minutes away from me. It was nice to see somebody's doing this locally. But I'm going to get this thing unloaded and we'll go through it. But it's an automated cattle feeder that feeds 12 head of cattle. We'll be setting it up out in the pasture over here. It is all solar powered and I got to just hook the battery up in it, load it with feed and that's that's about it. I'm gonna be doing a lot of fun things with this like putting sensors on it and making it communicate with my cell phone and things like that, uh, which it does not do out of the box. It weighs about 1500 pounds and it stores, I believe it's 75 bushel of feed. It's got forklift slots here so you can move it around. It is really well built. I'm really impressed. I went and toured the factory and warehouse where they make these things. They kind of do them in small batches. The quality is just like next level on this thing. It is all made here right in the US. I saw every process. They do everything there. They cut everything. They weld it all. They even work with someone in the States to figure out the whole solar setup and charge controllers and all that stuff. Let me get this thing unloaded and go, go through it more. So normally you'd want to do this with forks. They go under there. I don't have my forks out here. I'm still waiting on them from Cat. If my straps were shorter, this would be a lot easier because I'm right up at the peak of my reach here. I'm just going to take it real slow here. It'll only take me a minute. I'm, we're just going right in through the gate right there and we're just going to set out there. I'm going to take this owner's manual home with me and read it and figure out how to do this. So there's also some instructions on here on how to set up the feedings and do the cycles. All the different options here um, for setting times and stuff. Apparently this is a new solar charge controller they're using. And this is made out of a guy in Michigan, I believe. In Wisconsin, it's really cold right now. It's windy and it feels like it's below zero at the moment. But you want to use a lead acid battery because they perform better in the cold and they charge. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I got to adjust the panel to face the sun. We've got kind of an overcast day here, but this is sort of looking south right now, southwest. So I want to tilt that panel. It makes a huge difference in how well this thing performs. This has got some drain holes in there for letting water out. There's a sight gauge over here to see when the feed's getting low. Um, I'm hoping to automate all that. I got it on this pallet right now just because I'm not sure exactly where this will end up. I'm going to test it out over here. It's close enough to the trail here that I can lift the bulk bag over with the excavator. I'm not sure if this road is going to support, support a feed truck when it's muddy and stuff like that. The way this works is come up here and this hopper lifts up, probably have to do it from the middle. So this hopper lifts up. And with that lifted up, I can fill it with feed. Like I said, maybe over the fence using the excavator for now with a bulk bag. They did recommend the first things you do here are don't fill it full. Just put a few bags in, test it out, make sure everything's working correctly, and then fill it just so you get all the kinks out and make sure it's working fine with your feed. This battery panel here has eight bolts on it, nine sixteenths. So we're gonna pull this off and just kind of see what it looks like under here. Okay, this is pretty heavy gauge stuff, let's see. Yeah, that's like uh, eighth inch thick steel. So that's um, pretty heavy. So the battery plugs in here. This is set up with a hydraulic, electric hydraulic pump that then um, powers this piston here that pushes the whole feeder in and out to drop the feed down. So this uses hydraulic power instead of an actuator or a motor. Um, so, this should be much more reliable and more powerful.
I got the panel adjusted. One thing I've noticed straight out the gates is that there aren't a lot of handholds and steps to climb up to service the top or to be able to lift that hopper door up. So it would be nice to have like some sort of step built into this because it's pretty challenging out here in the field. But I got the panel tilted and I needed help from a step ladder because I can't, I couldn't reach up there. And this is super slippery with boots on and snow. But they did mention that with it tilted, the snow sloughs off better so you don't get it piling up. And if you get this solar panel to be blocked up with snow, your battery won't last very long, maybe a day and a half or so. So it's important to keep that clean. This is all I'm gonna do for today. It's really cold and I'm gonna head out, read the manual and come back and play with this thing tomorrow. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the inside when you get the hopper open. We are gonna put another ton in here. It looks like we probably have a half ton in there, would be my guess. So we had to set up to get over the fence with the excavator. So we're gonna try that, see how it works. And these guys are all waiting. Step would be really nice or something to, you have to have a step ladder out here but here is how it looks when it's feeding in so yeah it's pretty slick we are full here everything's full these guys are ready it's almost time for the automated feeding to go off here, so let's close this down. And see on the top, we have the solar panel. We'll do a test feed for these guys. So one of the first things I don't really love is this is like one of these that requires a flathead instead of just like some knobs because I don't know, I don't usually have a flathead with me. It'd be nice just to have like a, something a human hand could open, preferably not a cow's mouth. Okay, so these guys are all standing here because it's almost time for this automated feeder to go on its normal schedule. So they're waiting, so we're just gonna do a manual feed and I can show you how we do that. You do a test cycle, that's just gonna be one pump of the ram. And if you do manual feeding, it's gonna do whatever your feet feeding set at. So you can set the number of pumps per feeding. So we have our set up for two pumps, two feedings a day. So we're just gonna do this manually now. And here's what it looks like. Make the beat. You guys all know to come and eat. I'm sure they'll get smart and figure out that there's more on this side. I'm messing up their feeding schedule because they're all getting piled on that side. They're afraid to come around to me. This has really made a huge difference in our lives because we basically just have to fill this hopper up every month and a half uh, is about what these cows are going through right now. So it's about a ton in a month and a half and that's nine cows. You can see sort of the amount of grain per feeding that we have right now. But it's pretty cool. These guys love it and so do we. There's some happy cows now. 
and because they did a manual feeding they're going to get another bonus feeding here in about an hour and they will come running all the way across this pasture when they hear that beep and so Hannon did a good job they made an audible alert this thing's pretty slick i haven't had any issues with it and i'd say right now the biggest clunky part is us feeding it or filling it with these bulk bags if i were to relocate this we uh would put it closer to the road so the feed truck can get it our fields and our pasture are down in lower areas and this is early march in wisconsin and this is what it looks like when you start getting this thaw it's ice underneath and it's mucky mud on top so you're kind of sliding around everywhere but that's really the only only thing we need to figure out now is just get that automated better and uh, this will be a breeze.